Hey everyone, it's Eric Thor here and in today's video I want to talk about losing yourself, right? So a lot of people talk about mental health as it's like this thing where you know you flip a switch and one day you know you're mentally unhealthy, right? And you're depressed or you're just not happy anymore and everything sucks, right? And I think so a lot of people it can seem like that but for most people I think mental health is a slow decline and not always do we recognize that we are on this path towards feeling worse and worse and towards having less and less energy and less and less enthusiasm and less and less motivation, right? We don't always recognize that this is happening. What we are seeing is all the necessary compromises that we have to make at our work, in our relationship, for our friends, in order to fit in and in order to, you know, make things better. And what we are seeing is, you know, the climb upwards. So we confuse this climb upwards and we think that we are working our way to a better time, a better day, what we'll have, you know, what it is that we are searching for, you know, whether it's approval, whether it's likes on YouTube, whether it's, you know, being popular, whether it's being loved and appreciated by others or having the approval of your boss or manager, you know, what we're thinking of is the climb where we're trying to make amends, trying to make better, trying to improve. But in general, what is actually happening is we feel like we're slowly and gradually tipping, right? We're getting less and less energy and less and less enthusiasm. And we're becoming less and less like ourselves too, because what we're not recognizing is that many times these slow compromises that we make along the way can cause our life to spiral out of our control and out of what we want. We can find ourselves, because of this, getting further and further away from our goals, from what we want, from what we value. And one day we just wake up and we realize, who am I? You know, What am I doing? Where am I going? Where am I headed? What am I trying to do? And so that's what I'm talking about today. How can you first and foremost recognize when you're starting to fall into the autopilot? And what can you do to turn back the clock? The reason why I make this video is because I think when I hit 25, you know, I started more and more actively trying to get on YouTube, trying to make videos, trying to build a channel. And you know, in the beginning it was really easy. Everything went really well. And I was making all the risks and I was doing all the things behind the scenes to really make my channel grow and to really improve in what I did, right? However, Eventually, there came a time when I had to compromise. So I had to get a job and I had to start making a salary and I had to start working full time and I had to make a lot of compromises. And I was in a relationship at the time as well. And I had to make a lot of compromises for that relationship too, right? So gradually and slowly, I started trying to fit myself more in the corporate rat race. I tried to, you know, become a more successful person at my work. I tried to, you know, do the nine to five. I tried to fit in with the normal grind of life and in some ways you know I was successful in other ways I was a train wreck right so I tried my best to you know meet the expectations of my girlfriend at the time I tried my best to you know impress my manager and I tried my best to you know do everything at the same time and I tried to keep doing YouTube I tried to keep posting videos I tried to keep doing everything but throughout it I really struggled. Honest to say, I really, really struggled. I was listening to the soundtrack of La La Land on repeat, feeling like I had compromised myself as an artist, feeling like I had lost my path, feeling like I had given up, feeling like I was going to fail, feeling like I was getting nowhere, and feeling like I was slowly and slowly slipping away from myself. So the truth is, you know, you ask yourself, when, how do you know when you're starting to make unhealthy compromises that are going to take a toll on you and your mental health in the longer perspective. The truth is, I think you're fully aware because every day it's a conscious choice to force yourself to do something that you don't want to do. Every day it's a conscious effort to, you know, push yourself to, you know, do something that you don't really have the energy for. And there's a toll for that, right? Because you're paying the price later on. Like while you're taking a loan from future you and the future enthusiasm and the future joy, what's really happening is you're building up a debt and uh, you're starting to, you know, that debt is starting to accumulate. So what ends up happening is uh, to some extent, I tried to be everywhere at once and I tried to be three Eric's at the same time. I tried to be the perfect relationship Eric. I tried to be the perfect employee Eric. I tried to be the perfect YouTuber Eric, you know? So I was really split in three different directions, trying to, you know, be perfect in every single regard. And I think 
that's a lot of the time what really comes down to our inability to prioritize, our desire to want it all, usually leading to us losing everything, right? And so the question is, what do you do about it, right? Because here's like lots of questions, right? Should I have not been in a relationship? Should I have not gotten a job? Should I have not pursued YouTube? What in the sense should I have done differently to have avoided that? And this, that's a question you can ask yourself in general, like what is it you're supposed to do in these situations when you're starting to feel like you're getting distracted, you're trying to be perfect, you're trying too hard, you're trying too much. What is it you're supposed to do in these occasions? And I think, you know, honest to, you know, God, I don't know what I want to say with that, uh, but <laughs> I think what it really comes down to in the sense is uh, don't try to do everything at the same time and learn to be honest with yourself about your realistic capabilities and also learn to be honest with other people about what you're capable of and how much you have in you to give and what it is that is most important to you. And in that sense, a lot of the time, you know, when you're juggling, for example, a question like, should I go into art or should I get a full-time job and earn a full-time salary, right? A lot of the question is, well, often the answer is do both, but do both half, right? Don't commit yourself fully to an artist's lifestyle if that's not what you want and if that's not what you're ready for and if the struggle and pressure and stress of that is too much, because that's what it was for me. When I started out trying to build a career on YouTube and started doing coaching and starting with building everything, I was anxious every single day. I was turning money all the time. I was constantly, you know, living budget paycheck to paycheck. I was constantly in a stress about money and it was slowly eating away at me, right? So when I was going 100% for the artist route, you know, I wasn't happy and it was not good for me and it was not good for my health, right? So that's why I got a job as well, right? That's because I realized, you know, I can't keep doing this. It's eating up my energy and it's taking too much for me to do that, right? But then the second question is, you know, why get a full-time job when you can get a part-time job? Instead of uh, trying to, you know, compromise in the sense that, you know, you're doing the artist thing 100% or you're doing a full-time job and nothing at all, right? What you really need to think about is, is there a way for me to combine both by setting realistic expectations, right? Can I get a 20 hour job? Can I go down in hours? Can I do something to make sure that, you know, I make some income and some livable wage so that I can live a humane life, right, for myself and provide for myself what it is that I need, you know? And what can I do in order to make an artistic life for myself possible? If I have artistic passions and pursuits, like if I want to spend four hours every day writing, at least, you know, if I want to spend time drawing, if I want to do these things, if I know this is who I am, and if I know I have this in me, you know, then definitely recognize that you can't prioritize, you can't put that away, right? If you're an artist, you have to create, it's going to be a need in you, it's going to be something that you want to do, right? So that's just an example, like, be realistic also about who you are, like, look yourself in the mirror and recognize, you know, am I really capable of making this compromise? Do I really have it in me to make this choice? Do I really have it within me to do that, right? Because a lot of time when we're like doing these things, we're not honest with ourselves. And so what you have to do is you have to be honest with yourself and have conversations with yourself about how you're doing, how you feel, and what it is that you really wanna do. Because a lot of time I see people, you know, they make a decision, they tell themselves, you know, I'm gonna do this, and I'm going to go full, full on that, and I'm gonna go 100% for that. But they can't help but look at that other thing that they actually really wanna do. And that's what happened to me. So what really happened to me was I want, the reason why I split myself in three was because I wanted all these three things. Like I loved my girlfriend. I loved my <laughs> a chance to be useful at work. I loved what I did on YouTube and I enjoyed all of it. And I really wanted to do it all. And I couldn't help but look at it, right? But the question was really, in a sense, to which extent and to what expectations and to what standards, right? Because Often it's, uh, we're trying to <laughs> go too far and we're setting expectations a bit too high in the sense of pressure on ourselves of like how good we have to be. I had way too many expectations on how many viewers I was going to get and how much support I was going to get through YouTube. I had way too high expectations about how well my professional career was going to go and how quickly I was going to learn my job and how well I'm going to perform in that environment, right? And I had way too many expectations on myself on what I was going to be like as a partner and what kind of a partner I was supposed to be, right? So in the end, I ended up 
being half at everything, right? I ended up being kind of meh at all of these three things. Like I ended up, you know, being a jack of all trades, you know, a little bit good at some things, but not good at anything, not really, really good at anything, right? So that's something that came to mind. Uh, that was what I really started to learn at this point, what skill I was really building at this point was learning to become more minimalistic, right? So learning to have lower expectations, learning to have more realistic expectations and not in the bad way, not of giving up on certain things, but also learning to find happiness in the smaller things, right? Here, it's a matter of perspective. There's a matter of perspective of recognizing that, hey, I have an amazing audience. I have so many nice viewers. I get so many nice comments. I have so much support, right? Why am I wanting more? Why do I want more? For what reason? For what purpose? Because the truth is, even if I don't grow anymore on YouTube, I'm still going to be really happy. I'm still going to be glad for everything that I've done there and everything that I've achieved through that, right? And I think that's something that I think it's very important for you to do as well. And here's why it's important to, you know, have conversations with your friends and family members and with yourself about what it is that you expect and to gain and think about things, right? Because a lot of time we can't really see the progress that we're making, right? Because we're staring ourselves blind at what we're not able to do, right? Oh my, I'm really struggling at learning React and it's really tough on me and I'm struggling with TypeScript and it's really hard for me to learn this, right? And I feel like I'm failing at work, right? That's, that, that feeling can be very heavy, right? But what you're not seeing is actually you're making slow progress, you're constantly improving, your code is getting better and you're figuring things out and you're slowly making progress, right? So, hey, okay, it's okay, you know? You should be happy about what you're already able to learn and how far you've already come, right? Similarly, in your relationships, it can be a matter of, you know, oh, I wish I was more attentive as a partner. I wish I was able to give more. I wish I was able to provide more. I was able to, I wish I earned more so that I could surprise my girlfriend with better gifts, you know, with travel, you know, with things like that, right? You can have all these expectations on what you can give to the world and others. But here, what you have to think about really is also talking with your partner about what it is that they expect from you in a sense and what it is that makes them happy and also recognizing the happiness that you're already giving and providing for that person because that person might already be really happy with you and might really love you and might really care for you and might really appreciate you because the truth is they see the effort you're putting in and they see like how kind you are they know they see how considerate you are they see how supportive you are and you know people note these things right and uh, when you can talk about these things and recognize you know oh I, this person really cares and oh they, they're really doing their best and oh they're really uh, supportive and they're really working hard you know <laughs> you know I, I think people can really appreciate that and can see like that and a lot of the time it's not about you know being able to afford an expensive vacation but it's about being able to you know spend time together to go somewhere new together to you know see something different that you haven't seen before and a lot of the time these things are a lot more realistic and a lot more achievable than what you think right and it doesn't have to be that big all around the world trip it doesn't have to be you know being able to afford a house being able to afford you know all those things right so here I'm talking about, you know, expectations that you have on yourself that are slowly sapping away your strength. Because a lot of the time, like throughout my life, I tended to look at myself at, as, I was, as if I was a diamond. You know, I was a rock that I had to polish into a diamond. So I didn't really think of myself as a diamond. I thought of myself as a stupid gray rock that perhaps could be polished to become a diamond under enough pressure and with enough expectations and with enough criticism and self-harm, you know, I could do that, right? So if I was tough enough on myself, if I worked hard enough, if I pulled long enough hours, I'd eventually become that diamond. And if I put enough pressure on myself, eventually I'd be successful, right? But what I didn't realize was I was slowly sucking away my strength and motivation. I was slowly, you know, harming myself and I was really, really causing myself pain, right? And um, it got to the point where I was realizing this, right? Why am I harming myself, you know? Why am I being mean to myself? Why am I hurting myself? Why am I, you know, telling myself mean things? Why am I putting pressure on myself, you know? Because I'm a human being, right? I never do this to anyone else. I never put anyone else under that pressure. I never have these expectations for anyone else. When I look at somebody else, I'd be much more patient, much more reassuring, much more appreciative, and I'd see the beauty in that person. I'd, see, I'd love them and I'd care for them, you know, because that's how I am. I love people. I appreciate people a lot and I care for other people a lot, right? So what I was learning to do was I was learning to look at myself the same way that I look at other people. 
So hold myself to the same standards that I would hold other people, right? To make sure that, you know, I'm fair to myself about my expectations and how I look at myself. So over the last two years, I really had to pay the price of mental health. I had to recover from a breakup for a relationship that had lasted for a very long time. And I had to really put myself back together. And the truth is, it was not a really nice process. It was a really ugly process. It was a process of financial difficulties. It was a process of intense stress. It was a process of recovering from COVID and the lockdown. It was a process of recovering from all the anxiety I had around getting my driver's license. It was a process of recovering from, you know, all the pressure I'd put on myself at my day job. It was two years recovering and getting back to myself. So I think it was also my worst time on YouTube. It was my worst time as a creative. It was my worst ideas that I've ever had. It was a time where I made the worst videos I've ever made. And so I was noticing and looking at myself and I was looking at my content and I was looking at everything, you know, around how I was thinking about things. And a lot of the time, you know, you don't recognize when you're not being healthy in your thinking, right? So in the time of it, I was struggling so much and I was feeling so badly that I couldn't even see how bad my ideas were and how stupid my decisions were being and how irrational I was being. And I couldn't even notice, you know, all these things, right? So all I could think about, you know, was, you know, how I felt at the time. And I think that's something that also people have to recognize, you know, when you're in a da dark path and when you're down something difficult and when you've been through a hard time, you're allowed to feel like shit. <laughs> you're allowed to struggle and you're allowed to have bad ideas and to think bad thoughts and to have these things because that's the repercussions, that's the fallout, that's the, that's the process of recovery, right? Because after a bad relationship or like after a difficult relationship, you know, it was a good relationship, by the way, I should mention. <laughs> uh, on the whole, I was a really good relationship. What I want to say is just, well, after you've had bad difficulties because there were bad experiences in that relationship and there were bad experiences in my work and it was bad experiences getting a driver's license. It was bad experiences during lockdown, right? During that whole process, it's normal to go through and to relive many of these experiences and to think back to them and to struggle through them and to, you know, put them into everything that you do. And it becomes something that shapes the content that you make, the things that you say, the things that you talk about and how you are in relationships and what you say to other people. And that's also something that's important to remember that, you know, what I'm saying right now and how I'm talking about things, now I'm approaching things is a reflection of how I feel right now. So how am I feeling right now? Check in with yourself, right? Okay, I have this idea. It sounds like a really good idea in my head, but am I, how am I feeling right now? When I, you know, am I actually feeling great? Is, is, am I really okay? You know, am I really doing well? You know, like, and is this really what I need right now? You know, <laughs> a lot of time that's also something that's very important to do. Just check in with yourself and recognize when you're being irrational. Create safe spaces where you can be irrational because, you know, the truth is we do need to vent. We do need to put this out somewhere. I send WhatsApp messages to myself. I write uh, my own journal to process my thoughts. And I sometimes talk to friends that I, uh, about my struggles as well. And I think that's something that's very important because if you're not able to get it out, it's gonna keep spinning inside, right? So that's what you need to think about too. How can you make sure that these things don't keep spinning inside as well? How do you make sure that you can express it? How do you make sure to talk about it? I wanted to make this video because the truth is I really struggled with mental health problems throughout the past few years. I definitely should have seen a psychologist. I definitely should have tried to talk to somebody about it. I definitely should have asked for more help during that process. And I definitely should have been easier on myself. And so I'm making this video with one piece of advice and that is be easy on yourself, be kind to yourself, listen to yourself and give yourself the help that you need in order to feel better. Ask yourself what it is that you need in order to feel better. Ask yourself what it needs, what you need in order to process your struggles and to get past your traumas that you have and what it is that you need in order to, you know, get through the day. And have realistic expectations too in the sense of how much pressure can I handle right now? You know, 
how much stress am I able to deal with at this point? And how do I look at myself when I make mistakes and when I struggle, when things go bad? Am I mean to myself? Do I say, oh, you idiots, you stupid person, stop doing that, right? Or do I look at myself with kindness and understanding? Oh, yeah, it makes sense that I said that. I understand now why I lashed out because I was really going through a tough time. No, I understand why I did this bad thing. and I get why this happened because the truth is, you know, you're human. And just as you can empathize with other people and see other people's point of view, if you start looking at yourself too, you can empathize with yourself as well because you're a person too and everyone's a person. And everyone's a human being and we all make mistakes. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's my message in today's video. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you for being and continuing to be a part of my creative journey and self-expression. And if anyone needs help with anything or is struggling with anything right now, you can always reach out to me and I'm always happy to provide a listening ear. Take care everyone and see you in the next video.